Thank you very much, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. You can please take your seat. Thank you very much, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Before we begin our opening session, may I respectfully ask you to rise on your feet while we, we observe one minute silence to the honor of all victims who have suffered as a result of anti personal line mines. May their gentle souls rest in peace. Excellencies, could you kindly take your seat? This is a regional meeting or regional workshop on addressing improvised anti-personal mines within the context of the Convention on the Prohibition of the Use, Stockpiling, Production, and Transfer of Anti-Personal Mine Ban. The Convention on the prohibition, the use, stockpiling, production, and transfer on, of anti-personal landmines, and on their destruction, also known as the Anti-Personal Landmine Convention, Ottawa Convention, uh, is a cornerstone of the international effort to end the suffering and casualties caused by anti-personal landmines. Since its entry into force on 1st March 1999, 164 states have joined the convention, including and more importantly, all states in Western Africa. This regional meeting is for us to discuss the implementation of the treaty within our regional peer review mechanism and come up as a strong regional group in the implementation of the convention. To begin our morning session, I have the singular honor to invite the Executive Secretary of the National Commission on Small Arms and Light Weapons to introduce our first speaker. With a round of applause, shall we welcome Mr. Samuel Williams Yaboa. Thank you very much, Mr. Leonard. It's a privilege for me to stand here and introduce my immediate boss, a member of parliament for a couple of years, a lawyer by profession, and he's the name of Honorable Ambrose Derry. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Thank you very much. I'm happy you did not go further than that. His Excellency, Alaji. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency, Dr. L.Y. Touch, President of the Fifth Review Conference of the Anti-Personal Mind Ban Convention, First Vice Chairman, President of the Cambodia Mine Action Authority and senior minister attached to the Prime Minister of Cambodia, His Excellency Ambassador Ochit Ramien Daswa Ranzali, the EU Ambassador who is head of delegation, the Reverend Professor Frimpong Mansu retired. He is board chairman, National Commission on Small Arms and Light Weapons. 
Mr. Samuel William Yebua, Executive Secretary, National Commission on Small Arms and Light Weapons, Mr. Carlos Juan Ran, the Director, Anti-Personnel Mind Ban, Convention Implementation Support Unit, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure and honor that I extend a warm welcome to all esteemed participants gathered here today for the regional conference on addressing the humanitarian impact of impoverished, improvised, anti-personnel minds. We are honored to host all of you at this crucial event in the beautiful city of Accra, Ghana. I am heartened by the diverse representation in this gathering <coughs> as we embark on this significant endeavor. We are joined by representatives from all 15 member states of the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, as well as eight African nations from the Sahel region. In addition, we are honored to host delegates from other various African countries, reflecting our collective commitment as Africans to addressing the pressing humanitarian challenges posed by improvised anti-personnel minds. Furthermore, our conference brings together esteemed delegates from the United Nations organizations, international bodies, and humanitarian organizations spanning 13 countries across Europe and the Americas. This inclusive participation underscores the global solidarity and collective determination to confront the grave humanitarian impact of improvised anti-personnel minds. Ladies and gentlemen, the presence of such a diverse and distinguished assembly highlights the agency and importance of our shared mission. Improvised anti-personnel minds continue to exert a devastating toll on civilian populations, causing untold sufferings and hindering the socioeconomic development of affected communities. It is therefore imperative that we unite our efforts to mitigate these humanitarian crises and work towards a safer and more prosperous future for all. Over the course of the next three days, it is my hope that all participants would engage in constructive dialogue, exchange best practices, and explore innovative solutions to the challenges at hand. A special welcome to the European Union, our sponsors, and the Anti-Personnel <coughs> Mind Convention Implementation Support Unit, ISU, the organizers whose dedicated efforts have made this conference a reality. I urge all brothers and sisters from outside Ghana to find some time out of your tight schedule to explore and enjoy Ghana, 
and feel at home, I have no doubt that you will experience the proverbial hospitality of Ghanaians and the great taste of Ghanaian dishes. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a memorable stay, lovely interactions, fruitful discussions, and a very successful meeting. May all these combine and translate into an impactful outcome that would lead to global peace, security, and prosperity for all. Once again, you are all warmly welcome to Ghana and this conference. Akwaba. Thank you. God bless us all. Thank you very much, Honorable Ambrose Derry, for your statement. Your statement highlighted the urgency of our shared vision in addressing improvised and personal landmines. You called on us to unite our effort to mitigate the impact. And finally, you urged us to participate, engage fully, share ideas in the attempt to finding a solution to the ever impact of improvised anti-personnel landmines. Thank you very much, sir, for your statement. Before we go to the next speaker, let me say that this workshop has been organized with the support from the European Union and being hosted by the Republic of Ghana, the National Commission on Small Arms and Light Weapons, and the Implementation Support Unit of the Anti-Personal Landmine Ban Convention. Next, we will take a statement from Margaret Arach Orech, the founder and director of Uganda Landmine Survivors Association and ambassador for the international campaign to ban landmines. Shall we, with a round of applause, invite <laughs> Your Excellency. Your Excellencies, the Vice President, Honorable Minister, Diplomats present, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Allow me to extend my appreciation to the Government of Ghana for hosting this important regional conference that gives us an opportunity to jointly explore ways to address the humanitarian impact of improvised anti-personnel mines within the context of the Mine Ban Treaty. Thank you to the Implementing Support Unit for organizing this conference as we continue with the task of creating a safe and better environment within the without the threats of improvised anti-personnel minds, a feat we are all too keen to see unfold. Victim assistance, which is one of the core pillars of the Mine Ban Treaty, is a difficult one to tackle for many reasons. The continuous conflicts around the world and in Africa within this context keeps on bringing a surge to the numbers of new victims creating more burdens on states that most often are facing other national issues. Through its journey for a total eradication of anti-personnel mines, the Mine Ban Treaty has been tremendous, has seen tremendous success through collaborations. With African states, I believe we can do similar with the many regional bodies it has such as with the African Union, ECOWAS, IGAD, the East African community where I come from, 
and many more to further victim assistance in the region and make the lives of survivors better. It is also an opportune time to call on the role of the African Union in maintaining the promise that it made to affected communities, development and mine action as per the most recent African Union resolution on conflict resolution, peace and security. The widespread impact of anti-personal mines contamination robs communities of the right of life and livelihoods for generations. We have seen the long-term economic and environmental catastrophes where these indiscriminate weapons have been used. Nearly all of African nations, with the exception of a few, have joined the Mine Ban Treaty. And your voice is critical to strengthening the international norm, prohibiting use of anti-personal mines, respect for international humanitarian law and protection of civilians, and sending a clear message that the vast majority of Africa stands behind this treaty, protecting lives and ensuring human rights of the survivors, and further preventing humanitarian tragedies and supporting community livelihood. It's therefore imperative to raise awareness on the plight of the victims of mine develop dedicated policies meant to benefit them so that the void of neglect that has remained for so long can be filled with activity and resources. For effective coordination of victim assistance, planning and providing assistance should be coordinated among all stakeholders and at various levels of government, international agencies, civil society, and private sector. It's also important that all sectors of the government are involved, including the large departments that have a significant impact on disability. As a survivor of this indiscriminate weapon, and on behalf of the survivors everywhere, I urge African states to make all the efforts possible to help prevent and eliminate suffering from these indiscriminate weapons and finally, I would like to thank the Convention Presidency, together with the Implementing Support Unit, and of course the co-host, Ghana, for this important and timely conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Arach, for your statement. Your statement highlighted the need for us to look at how anti-personal landmines robs communities of lives. You highlighted and stressed that nearly all African countries are parties to the convention, which is a plus for us. And you also stressed the need for us to send a clear signal to the rest of the world on the need to abolish and eliminate these heinous weapons. Thank you very much. In Ghana, we love our cultural heritage. We love our custom. And once we have our visitors here, we want to treat you to a short cultural display, a rich Ghanaian culture. Shall we welcome the cultural troupe to give us a short demonstration? Thank you very much.
this is a treat of a typical Ghanaian culture. Shall we acknowledge their performance with a round of applause? Thank you very much, the cultural troop. Basically, they wanted to acknowledge our dignitaries on the high table and also acknowledge the fact that you took time of your tight shadow to be with us for these three days meeting. Thank you very much once again for that wonderful performance. Next, to give us a statement, we have His Excellency Dr. Lee Touch, Senior Minister of Cambodia and Vice President of the Cambodian Mine Action and Victim Assistance Authority and current President of the Anti-Personnel Mine Ban Convention. Shall we welcome him with a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you very much, indeed. Your Excellency Honorable Alhaji Dr. Mahan Madhu Babu Mia, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Your Excellency Honorable Abros Deri, Ministers of Interior of the Republic of Ghana, Your Excellency Ichad Razali, Ambassador of the EU, the European Union to Ghana, Your Excellency President designate of uh, Reconvention uh, Japan 2025. President designate of the Convention 2026 Zambia, Your Excellency, Madame Margaret Arach, Arach, founder and director, Uganda Landmine Survivor Association and ambassador for the national campaign to ban landmines. Excellencies, esteemed delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the anti personal mine ban convention family, I am deeply honored to speak to you today here in this beautiful and peaceful city of Accra, the Republic of Ghana. As we come together for this important conference on the impact of improvised anti-personal minds. And on behalf of our all, all our friends here present, I wish to express our deepest gratitude and appreciation to the government and the people of Ghana for their warm welcome and hospitality. Honorable Vice President, Dr. Mahanudu, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, your presence and participation at our conference today is extremely meaningful. Our meeting here shows our overwhelming compassion and our united commitment to a cause that is just not just important, but necessary for humanity. As we come together to champion the cause of eradicating the sufferings of our people and stress inflicted by landmines, I am reminded of the significant contributions made by nations in the pursuit of peace and security. Your Excellency, Honorable Vice President, this year, 2024, marks the 31st anniversary of a notable chapter in Ghana's rich history of peacekeeping efforts. Ghana sent her troops, her sons and daughters, to join the United Nations Traditional Authority in Cambodia, UNTAC, in 1992, a mission established by the United Nations to foster peace, stability, and support the transition to a democratic government in my country, Cambodia, after three decades of civil war. Ghana's strong commitment to the international peace and security was vividly demonstrated through its participation in UNTAC in my country. This contribution is a testament to Ghana's noble dedication to the collective efforts of the international community in solving conflicts and rebuilding nations. And on this very auspicious occasion, I want to convey today to you, Your Excellency Honorable Vice President, and through you to your great people, the overwhelmed gratitude of the government 
and people of Cambodia. Excellencies, I have heard that election is coming. I hope that the people will support your vision of uh, uh, shared uh, prosperity and uh, uh, progressive society. I wish you success in your upcoming election, and I wish the uh, success and prosperity to Ghana and her people. Your Excellencies, Dr. Maha Mahamadu, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, this year has marked an important milestone for the Anti-Personal Mind Band Convention since we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the convention as well as convene the, the fifth review conference. Cambodia has a great honor bestowed upon by all the 164 state parties to be the president and hold this conference and Cambodia's prime minister, Samnat Thabadai Honmanet, names it the Simrip Onko Summit on a Mind-Free World. The summit will be held from 25th to 29th November in Simrip Onko, considered one of the most attractive destin tourism destinations by world export organizations. The upcoming event represents a pivotal moment for the convention and preparation are underway. For your information, the event aims to finalize three crucial documents. First, a review document outlining the implementation of status of the Oslo Action Plan five years ago. Second, the Simrip Onko Action Plan for the years 2025-2029, serving as a comprehensive roadmap for the next five years to support collective efforts in fulfilling the Convention's obligations and objectives. And third, the Simrip Onko Political Declaration. My team and I are committed to developing these documents through an inclusive process, and we welcome suggestions and inputs from all state parties and other stakeholders. In this context, and in addition to the invitation letters extended by the UN Secretary General, I have the pleasure to personally invite you, honorable delegates, to attend the summit in Siem Reap and seize that opportunity to emerge yourself in an incredible history, culture, and nature of Siem Reap, Cambodia. Excellencies, honorable delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the Accra Regional Conference offer, offers a unique opportunity for African countries civil society and expert organizations to contribute insights that can lay a foundation for the development of a new, pl new plan for the state parties, as well as to ensure our commitment to the Anti-Personal Mind Ban Convention. In this connection, as state parties to the Convention, one of our obligations is to promote the norms and the utilization of this Convention. Now, there are three, the only three states not parties in Africa, namely Egypt, Libya, and Morocco. As such, your Excellencies, Honorable Vice President, would like to call for the kind support from the Republic of Ghana and other 52 states parties in Africa to bring those three countries to join the Convention community and make Africa the proud and its inspiring continent in which all countries are state parties to the convention. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the summit in Siem Reap and this regional conference underscore our collective efforts in addressing the problems of anti-personal minds. A lot has been done, but we still have a long way to go. The nature of conflicts has changed and anti-personal minds with improved nature are a new challenge that threatened to undo our progress. The increase in injury, especially among children and other vulnerable people, reminds us of the urgent need to find new ways to overcome these problems. Honorable Vice President, Senses Lady and gentlemen, dear friends, this conference is a great chance for us to work together more closely 
share our knowledge and come up with new ideas. We are here to take action, not just against the dangers from all conflicts, but also the kind of risks from these improvised minds, aiming to build and promote peace, security, and development. On this positive note, I want to once again thank the government of the Republic of Ghana, European Union, the Implementation Support Unit, and all the organizations here for their su strong support and dedication to the United fight against these indiscriminate weapons. Your help is significant to our shared goal of a world without mind. SNC's esteemed delegates, dear friends, as we work together, let us remember to always support each other, include everyone, and stay focused on our goal. Let us renew our promise to create a world without fear and destruction caused by landmines, in line with the preambles of the Anti-Personal Mines Ban Convention. Together, we can make a safer and better future for everyone. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your wonderful statement. Your statement captured the need or the offer that this conference gives to African countries to speak against the development of anti-personal landmines and also serve as a means to develop new plans for containing anti-personal landmines. You urged African countries to promote the norms and universalization of the convention, and you called on Ghana and other African countries to use their influence to get Egypt, Libya, and Morocco to join the treaty. Thank you very much once again, Your Excellency, for your statement. Next, we will take a statement from His Excellency Echad Razali, Ambassador of the European Union to Ghana. Shall we invite him with a round of applause, please? Thank you very much. Your Excellency Al Haj Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. Your Excellency Ambrose Derry, Minister of Interior of Ghana. Your Excellency, Senior Minister, Dr. Lituk, President of the Anti-Personal Mind Ban Convention. Your Excellency, Margaret Arakorek, Ambassador of the International Campaign to Ban Landmines. Distinguished representatives from the state parties to the Anti-Personal Mind Ban Convention would like to acknowledge the upcoming presidencies of the convention represented by the ambassadors of Japan and Zambia. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and pleasure to be with you today at the opening of this high-level and strategic regional conference of the Anti-Personal anti Mind Ban Convention. And it is an honor as well for the European Union, you heard, to support this event and this endeavor. I would like furthermore to thank and congratulate the government of Ghana for hosting this conference in coordination with the National Commission on Small Arms Control and the Implementation Support Unit of the Anti-Personal Mind Ban Convention. Why I want to congratulate Ghana is this endeavor demonstrates once again the commitment of Ghana to a key international cause linked to global security and disarmament agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, the entire Personal Mind Ban Convention, as reaffirmed by the 164 state parties at the fourth review conference held in Oslo in 2021, embodies the global norm against anti-personal minds. 
This is a norm intended to spare the lives of innocent people, including thousands of women and children who tragically every year fall victim to landmines, including landmines of an improved nature. As a diplomat, I'm always asked by kids, students, relatives, what is it about diplomacy? What is diplomacy about? Is it about cocktail, traveling in nice places, so on and so forth? And most of the time, I use, I refer to the fight against mines and landmines as an example of what diplomacy can achieve and what diplomacy is meant for, to avoid that mines are killing and destroying lives long after any given war has ended. I realized that when I visited Cambodia, I realized that as I visited Angola just after the end of the civil war. And this is the reason why the European Union, who is a strong proponent of multilateralism, supports the universalization and implementation of the Anti-Personal Mine Ban Convention. This remains one of our main priority. The Anti-Personal Mine Ban Convention is a key disarmament instrument and a success story of effective multilateralism and diplomacy. The Convention's integrity, full implementation, and strict application should be pursued and guaranteed. The European Union's assistance covers the full scope of mine action, including stockpile, destruction, education, advocacy, capacity building, as well as victim assistance. However, persistent challenges remain, notably the increasing use of anti-personal mines of improvised nature, including by armed non-state actors. The European Union considers that it is important to continue raising awareness of the obligations of state parties within the framework of the Convention. This is what we are doing here, and to report the use of anti-personal mines of an improvised nature, the European Union continues to condemn its use. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize once more that the Anti-Personal Mine Ban Convention can continue to continue or to count on the European Union's unequivocal support, politically and financially, the European Union and its member states remain fully committed to defending and strengthening the global norm against anti-personal mines, and the European Union supports the full implementation of the Convention. Once again, I would like to thank Cambodia for spreading the, the fight, and to thank and congratulate Ghana for its, her proverbial hospitality once again, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your statement and the assurance that the European Union continues to remain committed to the implementation and universalization of the Convention. Before we take the keynote address and ask we do it customarily. We would like to usher in our keynote speaker with a cultural performance for five minutes. And then the executive secretary of the National Commission of Small Arms and Light Weapons will introduce our keynote.
you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much from National Commission on Culture. We are grateful. And I'm honored again, once again, to introduce the last speaker as a keynote speaker for this morning's session. And if I want to get into his profile, it's going to take us a long time. So what I'll say is as a distinguished gentleman and currently the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, with a standing ovation, let's welcome him to the podium. Thank you, thank you very much. Please sit down. Thank you, I appreciate it. The Honorable Minister for Interior and the Member of Parliament for Nandom Constituency, Honorable Ambrose Derry, His Excellency, Dr. Lee Tuch, President of the Fifth Review Conference of the Anti-Personnel Mine Ban Convention, and first Vice President of the Cambodia Mine Action Authority and Senior Minister attached to the Prime Minister of Cambodia. Your Excellency Ambassador Echard Razali, the EU Ambassador, and the Head of Delegation. Reverend Professor from Pom Manso, retired board chairman of National Commission on Small Arms and Light Weapons, Ambassador Margaret Arak Orech, founder and director of Uganda and Lion Mine Survivors Association, and Mr. Carlos Juan Ruan, the director anti personnel mine convention implementation support units. Distinguished delegates, Invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and privilege to welcome you all on behalf of His Excellency the President of the Republic of Ghana to the Regional Conference on Addressing the Humanitarian Impact of Improvised Anti-Personnel Mines convened in our hospitable and vibrant city of Accra, Ghana. As we gather here today, representing various nations, organizations, stakeholders, we unite under a common goal to confront and mitigate the devastating humanitarian consequences caused by improvised anti-personnel minds. This conference serves as a vital platform for dialogue, collaboration, and action. We come together with a shared commitment to safeguarding human lives, protecting communities, and advancing peace and stability in our regions. It is imperative that we confront the menace of improvised anti-personnel minds with unwavering determination and collective effort. The Convention on the Prohibition of the Use, Stockpiling, Production, and Transfer of Anti-Personnel Mines and on their destruction, also known as the Mine Ban Treaty, seeks an end to the suffering and casualties caused by anti-personnel mines through the pursuit of four core aims, ensuring universal adherence, clearing mined areas, destroying stockpiled mines, 
in assisting victims. To achieve these aims, national legislation, cooperation and assistance, transparency and exchange of information, facilitating compliance and implementation support are essential. It is encouraging to note that the convention has 164 state parties, including Ghana, which is a good indication of a successful implementation of the convention, though the numbers could be far more. According to mine sweepers, it is currently estimated that there are about 110 million landmines scattered across the globe. While the individual cost of mines ranges from $3 to $30 US, the expense of their removal varies significantly and ranging from $300 to $1,000 per mine. Considering these figures, the total expenditure for clearing all existing mines is projected to range from 50 billion US dollars to 100 billion US dollars. However, the Landmine Monitor 2022 report indicates that state parties to the Mine Ban Treaty have destroyed more than 55 million mines stockpiled antipersonnel mines. This underscores the significant financial commitment made by both states and international organizations worldwide towards the effective implementation of the convention. The Landmine Monitor reported that in 2022, at least 4,710 individuals were killed or injured by landmines or explosive remnants of war in 49 states. Among this 4,710 individuals, 1,661 lost their lives and 3,015 sustained injuries. Civilian casualties constituted 85% of the total while nearly half of the civilian victims being children, amounting to a total of 1,071. As of October 2023, it was reported by the Landmine Monitor that approximately 60 countries and other areas worldwide were grappling with the detrimental presence of anti-personnel landmines contaminating their territories. Among these, at least six, 24 state parties are either believed or confirmed to be afflicted with impoverished, improvised mine contamination. These states include some African states, such as Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Chad, Mali, Nigeria, and Togo. The presence of improvised mines exacerbates the already grave humanitarian and security challenges faced by these nations, necessitating urgent and concerted efforts towards effective mine clearance and risk mitigation strategies. The use of improvised anti-personnel mines poses a grave threat to civilians particularly in conflict-affected regions. These insidious weapons indiscriminately maim and kill innocent men, women, and children, inflicting lasting physical and psychological harm. They disrupt livelihoods, impede socioeconomic development, and hinder efforts to achieve sustainable peace and security. Ghana recognizes the urgent need for concerted action to address the humanitarian impact of improvised anti-personnel mines. We remain steadfast in our commitment to promoting a world 
free from the scourge of landmines and explosive remnants of war. Ladies and gentlemen, mines on, the, on their declaration, compliance with these legal instruments is essential to preventing further human suffering and fostering a safer, more secure world for all. I therefore urge all states that are not parties to the convention to strive towards the ratification of the convention. In closing, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the European Union who are the sponsors of this conference. The Anti-Personnel Mine Convention Implementation Support Unit and the National Commission on Small Arms and Light Weapons, who are the organizers for their dedication and tireless efforts in convening this conference. May our deliberations be fruitful, our actions impactful, and our resolve unwavering as we work together to address the humanitarian impact of improvised anti-personnel mines in order to build a future of peace, prosperity, and dignity for all. Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, with these remarks, I hereby declare the conference duly opened. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. Uh, before we bring our opening session to a close, we will take the Ghana National Anthem once more. So respectfully, Excellencies, can you be on our feet whilst we take the National Anthem? 